As per earlier reports, anticoagulation in native valvular heart disease was considered when there is chronic or paroxysmal atrial fibrillation. In those with very large left atrium, those with severe left ventricular dysfunction or heart failure and when there is previous history of thromboembolism. Anticoagulation for mitral regurgitation with atrial fibrillation will usually follow the guidelines in non-valvular atrial fibrillation which excludes moderate or more rheumatic mitral stenosis and prosthetic valve. Those two mandate the use of vitamin K antagonists for anticoagulation as of now. As per the 2020 ACCHA guideline for the management of patients with valvular heart disease, class 1 recommendation is there for anticoagulation with vitamin K antagonist in rheumatic mitral stenosis with atrial fibrillation, prior embolic event or left atrial thrombus. Anticoagulation with vitamin K antagonist decreases the incidence of thromboembolic events in these situations. Anticoagulation in rheumatic mitral stenosis with sinus rhythm based on left atrial enlargement or spontaneous echo contrast noted on transesophageal echocardiography is mentioned as controversial in the 2020 ACCAHA guideline. One study of 848 patients with rheumatic mitral stenosis in sinus rhythm showed left atrial thrombus on transesophageal echo in 56, 6.6%. On univariate analysis, there was a trend toward thrombus formation in the study in those above 44 years and in those with infraposterior left atrial diameter more than 6.9 cm mean mitral gradient more than 18 mm of mercury and dense spontaneous echo contrast. But none of these factors predicted clot formation on multivariate analysis. Those with very large left atria in rheumatic mitral stenosis with sinus rhythm have more spontaneous echo contrast and lower left atrial appendage velocities which have been associated with higher rate of embolic events. Body size indexed left atrial volume of more than 60 ml per square meter has good sensitivity but low specificity for high thromboembolic risk. Non-vitamin K oral anticoagulation has not been studied in randomized controlled trials in patients with rheumatic mitral stenosis. These patients were excluded from the randomized atrial fibrillation trials. There is much higher risk of embolization with rheumatic valvular heart disease compared to those of other etiologies. It is thought that rheumatic process also affects the atrial muscle, increasing the risk of blood flow stasis and thrombosis in left atrial appendage and body. A retrospective analysis using observational insurance database has reported benefit with off-label use of direct oral anticoagulants in rheumatic mitral stenosis with atrial fibrillation. They mentioned that their data is hypothesis generating and needs to be replicated in a randomized trial. But an accompanying editorial cautions us about the difference between such retrospective data and rigorous randomized controlled trials. Details like severity and etiology of the disease are often not available in such databases. Reporting of clinical outcomes relying on diagnosis codes submitted by a large variety of healthcare providers will have greater variability than the blinded endpoint adjudication by a panel of independent experts in an RCT. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe, like, share and post your valuable comment below this video.